In this episode we leave Albany, travel along the coast, we go through the Valley of the Giants, then through Pemberton, Manjinup, and then on to Nanup. This is Green Pools here. I don't understand where it's got its name from. It's really cloudy today, which is a shame because if the sun was out, I reckon, I reckon this would just be popping with colour. But it's still really crystal clear. This is the drone view on the same day, which just make the colours come out so much better. Come over the little headland now and you go to Elephant Cove. And these are called elephant rocks because they're so big, big massive boulders. So let's go down and have a look. There they are, here's the big boulders. They are pretty big <laughs> and giants. And through into this cove here, gorgeous little spot. Pop the drone up again and get a nice aerial of this, I think. Just come down these steps here to get through to elephant rocks and Looks like you can't really get through unless you want to start swimming a bit. It goes deep pretty quick. So I'll have to walk back around. This shows you how big the rocks are though. They're really big size. Monsters. Like all the way up that staircase. Here I am on top of the rock. And just give you another perspective with the drone again. Beautiful little spot this. Stunning place. Hi Lulu. Hello. We're just down at Parry's Beach tonight. Well literally this is the beach obviously here. Sunset so it's really looking good in the background. And then we're just um we're literally just parked at the end of that boat ramp there in a campsite just on the edge. Pretty nice. And another good spot. There's the beautiful sunrise and then this great effect with the rainbow in the background as well. We're just here this morning at the Valley of the Giants. So going walking in the big trees. So we'll just set off down here and end up going up into the high canopy, which should be pretty cool. This is the start of it here. Just go up and we go up and up and up into the canopy. What a cool idea. Oh, it bounces like mad does this walkway. It's proper bouncing. Oh, that's a bit weird. God, these trees are massive. I don't know if you can see on the camera, the whole thing just wobbles with the wind and when you walk on it. But it's super high up here. Right, here's the tree top. And then boom, all the way down. Really high up. Really cool idea to build this up here. So we're at the high point here, we're 40 metres above ground, but the trees can still go to 70 metres. I'll tell you what, I feel like I'm on a high ropes course. But yeah, the trees are still up there. And they're all the way down there. Such a long way down. Right up in the canopy like the birds. Onwards Tam. There's Tammy there on the railing. Yeah. That'd be brilliant. How tall is this tingle tree, Tam? This tall. Just in the ancient forest now next to the the Valley of the Giants. We've got this sword grass and the quokkas live in here. It'd be really cool to see a quokka in these tunnels. We'll hopefully see them 
We should see them at Rockness Island when we get to Perth, but yeah, if we saw one here, it'd be pretty cool. We'll keep our eyes peeled. This is Grandma Tingle. We're in the Tingle Forest, if I haven't said that already. 400 years old, this tree. Pretty ancient. One of the red tingles here that's hollowed out. They reckon these hollows are created by a combination of fungal and insect attacks and then fire burning out the dead wood from the center of the tree. Pretty big. You got a sign here, I don't know if it's true, but they reckon there's a tiger snake nesting in there. I reckon they say that just to stop you going in. But I'll stay away. You've got to be careful in this forest because there is some strange little creatures as well. <laughs> There's one! A tree munchkin! There's a massive burl on this tingle tree here. A massive big growth. Apparently caused by sort of when they have a, an insect or fungal attack. It then produces loads of growth hormone and sort of comes over it like a scab. A massive big burl ends up on the tree. Huge is that thing. Munchkins found her house. <laughs> Just going home. <laughs> See ya. That's pretty cool. Free dried ice cream here with all the other backcountry food. Never seen that before. Got the standards, the beef stroganoff, beef teriyaki. And then you've got scrambled eggs. Cooked breakfast. And then you can need a dessert, apple pie. That's mad, isn't it? They've got everything. Yeah, we have them in the tent. Playtime in the van, tug of war with Dad. I'm winning. <laughs> I've just managed to win the worst game in the world, Banana Grams. I love it. Hate this game. I only brought it to keep Tammy happy, hoping she'd find some friends to play it with. Didn't expect to be playing it myself, but just put it down and won the game. Easy. Won't be playing again. Really this morning at the Bicentennial Tree, just near Pemberton. And they've closed it now, but you used to be able to climb it. Oh my God, that's ridiculous. So you used to be able to climb this. There's no safety mechanism. There's just a load of runs on it that you walk up. You used to just walk up that. Not fenced in or anything. You used to just walk all the way. There's a platform there. And then it keeps going all the way to the top. I can't believe he used to be able to do that, it's insane. It must be 40, 40 50 metres high. That's just ridiculous. Here it is, it used to be 65 metres. That is absolutely insane. Climb up to 65 metres. It's bonkers. Here's a Gloucester tree. Another big tree you climb. This was the first one before that bicentennial one. They built that one afterwards. Because this was getting climbed apparently 35,000 times a year. So they built another one, that bicentennial one. But God almighty, I don't know how you can get the bottle to go up here. You can get a bit closer to this one, but it's all cordoned off obviously. But you just go up them rails. Fair enough, it is netted in a bit, I suppose. So you're fairly protected, but... Oh God, that scared the bejesus out of me. Especially coming down that. It's like 40 odd metres high. There's no way, there's no way I could do that. Tammy reckons she could. You'd be all right doing that, you say, don't you? Yeah, she'd be fine. That would absolutely scare the life out of me doing that. It's monstrous. Absolutely monstrous. 
Hell of a view though. We're just at Pemberton now and um, we're at Big Brook Dam getting the old kayak out on a little paddle. Just trying to make the most of a hint of blue sky because it's raining quite a bit down here and forecast a really bad weekend. So getting the most of it and a little paddle on here. The flight of the swans. Got us loads of them. <coughs> Meant to be paddling all the way up there, but it's completely dry. You reckon it's been dry here for eight months until we arrived. And then it just started raining. It's been raining the last sort of week on and off. But yeah, this shows how low this reservoir is. It's incredibly low. Loads of bird life in here though. But yeah, super low. It's gonna be a short kayak today. Every day you're mountain biking with wild emus <laughs> they're just racing down the track. Oh crazy. Tammy's going to take on this massive kids slide in Manjinup. It's a massive slide, huge big staircase to get up. And then she's gonna come down nice. <laughs> Just cycling along on the Mundabidi trail and look at the size of this bowl. I've never seen anything like it. It's like he's on steroids. He's absolutely solid. Just muscle the bomb muscle. So yeah, I'm doing a bit of the Mundabidi trail today. Only a tiny bit, like 20 odd K. Because it's 1067 Ks goes from Perth all the way down to Albany on the coast, south coast or vice versa, whichever way you want to do it but it's definitely not a rail trail there's some nice sections like I'm on now which are nice smooth gravel but I've just been back there on proper single track going through the forest and um, yeah some steep bits as well like I'm just on my normal gravel bike I've got no gear, carrying no luggage, panniers, all that stuff and um, I'm in first gear trying to get up some of the hills. We met a lady yesterday that was doing the whole thing. And her bike weighed 45 kg with all her tent and panniers and all that stuff. So that's got to be tough going. Self-supported uh, self has got to be really hard work. But a cool trail, definitely one to put on the bucket list. We're just down at Tall Timbers little restaurant and brewery they're cool because they do wine tasting for Tam and they do beer tasting for me they brew their own beer here and, and all yeah and all local wines as well so uh, yeah we're tasting tasting away Tam gets 10 wines don't you yeah, yeah. But it's pretty cool you go in there and there's um what would you say for the whole cabinet isn't there yeah you put the card in and then you just have the stuff yeah it's, it's pretty cool so yeah tasty night out just in Nanup today and they've got these bike um, storage containers sort of dotted around town which are weird so you can just lock your bike up in here but it's a bit small and you crack it open and that's all there is one half of it you got to try and squeeze your bike in there a bit different odd isn't it the other thing is that these little small country towns as well, and they've all got a charging station for e-cars. Like they're everywhere. Every place we go to has got one. But um, it's really quiet today. It is a Sunday, so it's a bit deserted, but we were even in a place called Manjin Up yesterday. On a Saturday, lunchtime, everything was closed. Like everywhere was closed. It was weird. It's like the town had just been deserted. <laughs> There wasn't a single shop open and then we went to go to Woolworths this morning before we left and it didn't open till 11 in the morning so we had to leave that. It's um, pretty sleepy around these parts, definitely. 
but this is the main street and nan up there's the obvious bakery a few of the buildings all really old buildings as well so they're pretty nice but um it's really quiet really old bridge literally made of big bits of timber big logs all the way across it's pretty impressive i don't know what year it was built in but Pretty awesome. Really renowned here for its just massive trees everywhere. But yeah, that's pretty cool. To say it hasn't been converted to a big steel structure yet. We're going to have a kayak in this river. I don't, we'll I don't, I don't think he's going to be deep enough. <laughs> Let's see what it's like upstream. It looks, looks a little bit shallow. What are you doing, Lou? Oh, it's freezing, Lulu. What are you doing? That is freezing. Oh. oh, God. Yeah, not getting up that. No chance. What about downstream? Equally as bad. Yeah, we're not going to be kayaking here, babes. This is the caravan site at Nanup. This is the clouds tonight as well. Really cool feature. Tons of clouds up in the sky. Real nice patterns. All the way over. And then we'll just pop into the brewery, which is literally over the road, which is nice and convenient. This is a little step inside the brewery, show you around. Really nice, cute little place. I'm just riding this morning in Nanup. Apparently, the Gravel capital of WA, so it's holding up pretty well so far. It's beautiful. Just on this real nice, beautiful gravel track. And it's been raining quite a bit, so it's still holding up really well. It's really good dirt, apparently. The rain just seeps straight through it, so it's perfect. But yeah, I'm just on a, on a little loop around today, and we'll see how it goes. Beautiful it is. Thankfully, the sun's starting to shine. There's a bit of warmth in the air, it's nice. Just finishing my ride here and I'm back in Nanup. And I just noticed going over the bridge here and the little stream river in the bottom. And then on this tree, they've got obviously the markings of the floods, which is crazy when you look at the level of it now. And then you've got all the different years coming up this way. And then all the way up there, 1982, like, I'm having to angle the camera up off this bridge. It's God knows what height that is. It's ridiculous. That must have been one hell of a flood. I'm just mountain biking now in Nanup. It's got a bit of everything. Gravel, mountain bike, road riding, everything here. And then all the trails. There's black trails like that outlaw there. Trails all the way down. It's brilliant. Really good place. I'll just show you the trail map over here, but it's a shame I'm on this whole bike. Let me just jump off it. But um, there's the trail map there. I'm just in this section here called Trail uh, Tank 8. I'm just at this trail head here. So it's pretty good, loads of trails. And then you can go over to Tank 7 as well. And there's some more trails over here. That's pretty cool. But me and Tammy are just taking it in turns on her hardtail such a different ride like we both said it'd be so good to have the dual suspensions here it'd be bloody good fun but um yeah we struggle down on this it's better than not not doing it at all so it's all good the scenery here you could easily be in the uk especially with the sky so gray <laughs> beautiful though really green rolling hills Proper nice countryside. And it um, keeps raining, but the trail's beautiful. Like, it doesn't get affected by the rain at all. It's really grippy, so it's good fun. But yeah, we've, um, we've been driving for like a few days now since the south coast. And it's really the same scenery, like beautiful rolling green hills and countryside. Tons of cows everywhere in this field. So, 
Yeah, it feels um, very homely for me, definitely. No cockatoos are going berserk. Loads of black cockatoos in here. I don't think they're happy with me. What's the matter? Just at the bottom of the trail, there's all these wild emus. <laughs> Great. Just at the end of my ride, I'm literally at the brewery over the road from the caravan park. But the heavens has opened, so I'm just hiding under here with this cool penny farthing. Far Look at that. It's a beauty, isn't it? Cool penny farthing. Right, I'm about to take my chances. Zoom across.